Okay, in the next few videos, I'm going to make a GUI system so we can then click buttons and then build units in the game. Um, because now we have no way of doing this, we need to drag units into the scene itself. So in this video, we're going to focus on um, looping through these u these units we've created and getting their icons. Because instead of um, adding a new icon to the menu every time we create a new unit, the the script is going to get these icons from every unit we have, okay, and then put them in the menu automatically. So um, I've made a few changes from the previous videos. I've put um, these units into a subfolder in the resources folder. It's under prefabs units now. So we can loop through this folder within the uh, within the prefabs folder itself. Okay, the other thing I've made is a new unit. This is called a wooden post. We'll probably code how to attack it and destroy it or something later, but I just wanted to show how easy it is to create your own units in the game. So apart from the graphic, the 3D model, we have our selected graphic here the projector with our custom shader, the health bar uh, with, the, with the client script on it and our drag select point where we can drag over a particular point to select it. So it's very easy to create units, especially ones that do not walk. Okay, so to deal with the GUI, I'm going to open two scripts, the world script and I've also got another one called menu setup. So these are blank scripts and we'll be focusing on these in the video. Um, but within our unit scripts, I'm going to add one more public variable, public texture 2D. This is going to be called menu icon. So we can drag icons on each of our units. Okay, so we might need to roll over icons in the future, but I'll play around with the, the textures. So within the textures folder, I've got another one called unit icons. And here we have each of the icons which will appear in our menu on our GUI. So it's a GUI texture type, filter mode is points, there's no blend, blending in or anything. And we can optimize these depending on what device we're on, but I'm not going to do it in this video. So we simply need to dive into the resources prefabs units folder and look, go through each of our units and drag our textures onto them. So female humanoid robot, the Tin robot, solar farm, and I've made two versions of the solar farm. My new version is just um, all of the 3D models into one object. Um, the previous one was separate models for each solar solar panel, the vent, etc., etc. But that will become clear in the in the next video. So I'm going to delete the solar farm. This is the old version. Don't worry about that. And change this to solar farm. Okay, so if I dive down here, there's only one graphic for the entire model now. Okay, and where were we? So we need to drag this on, solar panel for the icon, wooden post, icon, wood post. Okay, so these are just very small icons. I've just taken a screenshot in, in the game. Cool, so now we can go ahead and loop through these and get the information we need to display our GUI, such as the icon, the name and also the uh, the path where these are stored are going to become uh, important. So within our menu setup script we can go ahead and define some lists to store this data. I'm going to import using system collections generic so we can import uh, the list object or the framework for it. So the first list is going to be a public static list of type texture 2D and this is going to store the icons of each of our units okay so these these icons here so we don't need this folder open anymore we're going to call this unit icon textures and it's simply going to be a new list of type texture 2D okay so I'm going to make two more lists public static list both of these are going to be of type string this one's going to be called unit names so we can display a, the name of the unit inside the uh, GUI. Going to be a new list. And the last one is going to be called unit path. Unit paths. So we can simply store the path where the uh, object is located in our resources folder and instantiate it whenever we like. So we have this information when we click the GUI button. So this is all I'm going to worry about 
for now in the script. We firstly need to get this information so then we can go ahead and say on GUI. We can then go ahead and display display GUI for unit buttons. So we'll do that in the next video probably. I want to focus on getting this information in this video. So in our world scripts, the reason I'm doing this in the world is because I want to set up um, core game elements within my world. So I'm going to get all the units that are located in the folder and getting their information. So on void start. So the first thing I'd like to get is the path of these units. Um, so I'm just going to define this. It's going to be in a string path equals and it's in the prefabs folder and the units folder. So we start off in the resources prefabs units. Okay. So now we can then get these uh, objects or the, these game objects in our folder. But the thing is Unity doesn't know these are going to be our game objects. So we just need to store them as objects for now. So we're going to make an object array. I'm going to call these units. And then we can say resources load all. So this literally loads all the resources within this folder. And we're going to bring in the path. So now we have a, um, a way to get these objects from the folder. So we can say if units length is greater than zero, so if there's things inside this array, we can go ahead and get the information. For int i, because it's just simple for loop, i is less than units length i plus plus. So let's store this object as a game object now. So game object unit equals units at this index as a game object. So we, we can't use the object type, we need to use the game object type to access its components and its name. So now we can go ahead and get the texture. Texture 2D unit icon equals unit get component, the unit script and the texture, so icon, the menu icon. So just to confirm within the unit script on each of our units we've made a texture 2D menu icon. Cool, so um, firstly I'm going to add this to the to the list we created in menu setup. So I can say menu setup unit textures add unit icon and we can simply do this for the other the other two lists as well. So the unit names we can say menu setup unit names add unit name it simply gets the name of the game object finally menu setup unit paths add so we can't actually get the path of this without going into diving into some unity code but there's a simple way we can do this get the path we defined at the top and then gets the forward slash and lastly the name of it simple as that just get the path so we can instantiate it later on so this is all I wanted to do in this video, just get the information from each of our units. We can then display the walk, the non-walkable ones in our menu so we can build buildings within the scene and with the walkable ones we can deal with them later on. But the most important thing is this information is now accessible. So the last thing I like to do is loop through this list and um, see if there's any information in them. So we can then simply define another loop i is less than, let's get the name of the unit, count i++, plus plus. we can then simply debug log unit names at this index. Let's see if we have any errors. Okay, so I want to attach these scripts to the empty game objects called world that just exists in our scene where we can attach these scripts to, so menu setup, world okay let's play the game so let's dive to our console as you can see the script gets each of the units that are stored in our units folder okay so female human robot tin robot solar farm wood post and um, it doesn't matter if there's multiple instances in the game this script just refers to what's inside the resources folder okay guys so in the next video we're going to use this data to 
create the GUI menu. So thanks for watching the video.